Hi, everybody, and welcome to the audio version of our exploration newsletter for the week of February 19th, 2021. As always, a special shout out to Heidi So and Jules Ramos, who compile the print version of our newsletter every single week. I'm Renee Meredith, the COO of Exploration, and now the news. The Mechanical Licensing Collective receives $424 million in historical unmatched royalties from digital service providers. The Mechanical Licensing Collective announced this week that it has received a total of $424,384,787 in accrued historical unmatched royalties from digital service providers, together with corresponding data reports that identify the usage related to these royalties. A total of 20 DSPs separately transferred accrued historical unmatched royalties to the MLC as required in order for them to seek the Music Modernization Act's limitation on liability for past infringement. In addition to the accrued unmatched royalties transferred to the MLC, the DSPs concerned also delivered more than 1,800 data files, which contain in excess of 1.3 terabytes and 9 billion lines of data. The transfer of these monies represents the culmination of a months-long effort on the part of the MLC and these DSPs to develop and implement the specifications for these usage reports. With these historical unmatched royalties and usage reports now in hand, the MLC can begin the process of reviewing and analyze the data in order to find and pay the proper copyright owners. Google's answer to TikTok is coming to the U.S. next month, YouTube Shorts. YouTube is bringing its short-form video format called YouTube Shorts to the U.S. in March. Both Google and Facebook have been combating the growing rise of TikTok in separate ways. Facebook started with its Reels app in Brazil, which was eventually rolled into Instagram. YouTube has been testing the short-form video format in India since September. India serves as a great test bed for new short-form video services since TikTok is officially banned there. YouTube says its shorts have been watched more than 3.5 billion times a day in India, which is its largest market. Chief Product Officer Neil Mohan announced that it gives YouTube a makeover for easier content creation. He further confirmed, since the beginning of December, the number of Indian channels using Shorts creation tools has more than tripled. In the coming weeks, we'll begin expanding the beta to the U.S., unlocking our tools to even more creators so they can get started with Shorts. Another giant podcast buy, iHeartMedia to acquire Triton Digital for $230 million. iHeartMedia has entered into an agreement with the EW Scripps company to acquire Triton Digital for $230 million. Operating in more than 50 countries, Triton Digital is an advertising technology SAAS platform for audio streaming, podcasting, and metrics that enables publishers to monetize their audiences iHeart's acquisition joins a tidal wave of podcast acquisitions in the music and audio space of late, with Spotify spending over $800 million on podcast-specific buyouts in the past two years. Amazon Music also recently acquired podcast production house Wondery for around $300 million, while SiriusXM acquired podcast platform Stitcher, also from EW Scripts, for $325 million in July 2020. Triton's two lines of business focus on advertising infrastructure and measurement, including a content delivery system that distributes digital audio streams and podcasts to listeners while inserting ads, and its measurement business, which tracks audience and creates ratings reports. Mechanical Licensing Collective, how to register and why it's important. The MLC, which officially launched operations on January 1, 2021, is on track to begin paying out royalties from roughly 50 digital service providers, including Spotify, Apple Music, and Pandora, in mid to late April. With roughly two months to go, the organization is now strongly encouraging all musical rights holders to register their works via the MLC website to ensure that they get paid. How much in unpaid royalties is out there? The MLC has already received over $424 million in accrued unmatched royalties from these DSPs. MLC CEO Chris Aaron adds that registration is free, the royalty payment schedule will occur monthly, and that 100% of royalties collected by the MLC goes to the music creators. 
This is all thanks to the Music Modernization Act clause that requires the DSPs to fund all operating costs of the organization. He further discusses all practical considerations concerning the MLC for rights holders, including who needs to sign up, how work should be registered, what resources are available for those who require assistance, and more. Universal Music unveils IPO plan for later this year. Vivendi plans to list 60% of its share of Universal Music Group on the Euronext market in Amsterdam by the end of the year. This according to announcements from the two companies this past week. The minimum target value for the company is 30 billion euros, or around 36 billion dollars. A Vivendi shareholders meeting has been set for late March to further the process. Vivendi additionally noted that Tencent, which finalized its acquisition of 20% of UMG late last year for 6 billion euros, is expecting a higher price this time around. The company's annual shareholders meeting is scheduled for June 22nd, with its next financial results on March 3rd. Copyright scanning startup PEX raises $57 million in a funding round. PEX, a startup that developed technology to scan, fingerprint, and index audio and video on a swath of video streaming services and social apps, has raised an estimated $57 million funding round to continue its growth. Tencent and Tencent Music were among the new investors in the company, who also include the Q-Ball Group, NextGen Ventures Partners, and Amerithene. PEX plans to use the funding to continue work on its attribution engine product, which the company says replaces unreliable upload filters and takedown requests with real-time use authorization and licensing, benefiting creators while recognizing and compensating those whose works are sampled and shared. And from our random rambling section this week, the legendary Cardi B becomes the first woman in Billboard chart history with two consecutive number one debuts on the hot R&B hip hop songs chart. Last year, Cardi B debuted at the top of the chart with the song WAP featuring Megan Thee Stallion. And this week, her song Up achieves the same success, debuting at number one. Not only is Cardi B the first woman with this achievement, but it's the first of its kind by any artist since Drake with his guest spot on Work and his single Summer 16 back in 2016. Check out Cardi B's latest single, Up, via the link in our description below. That's all for me this week. Thank you all for listening and don't forget to click subscribe to receive more content from Exploration. Also, even though the pandemic situation is dragging on and so many people across our country are finding themselves in weather situations that they never thought they'd be in, we have to look out for each other. So also, don't forget to keep being kind to each other.